What's good, YouTube? And we back with another reaction video. We about to react to uh, the Making the Case 1987 uh, Los Angeles Lakers, man. Um, we two real big Laker heads, Laker fans, man. Laker Nation, tap in. Where y'all at, man? But, um, shit, I'm trying to get my channel to 4K subs. I just hit 3K subs the other day. Um, appreciate y'all tapping in. Appreciate y'all, you know what I'm saying, supporting and subscribing, man. <clears throat> Do that now too. Yeah, yeah. Make sure, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button too, man. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I got a hundred for whoever subscribed. Let's get it, man. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But yeah, man. Uh, we about to react to making the case. 1987 Lakers, man. So all my Laker heads, make sure y'all tap in. Make sure y'all subscribe. Like I said. Um, this video is yeah, sponsored man. by tap in, man. Shout out Cherry Blast to your agent. I need to sponsor. Win, right? For sure. But you already know. My boy got three, three K subscribers. For sure, man. A clear, know, fruit. Yeah, clear, clear fruit, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. For shit, man. Let's get it, man. Most inspired team. Every champion deserves credit. But the question on my mind is, who is the greatest team of all time? With apologies to Bill and Wilt, I have a list of eight teams since 1970 that I want to look at and to that distinction. It is a loaded question. And yeah, the old one makers, man. Look at this shit. He got a good ass show. And the teams that were front runners from beginning to end. That's the ones who were unbeatable at their peak. Maybe the ones who tapped into something special and overcame countless obstacles. I did that. There is no right the answer. It's your job to make your own call. Making the case is my videos. job to make the case. Uh -huh. So today, I'll be making the case for the 1987 Los Angeles Lakers. As the greatest basketball team. Imagine Johnson Showtime. <laughs> he said he, was, he made it look like he was really fast at that bro. Like that's tough. Like that's without tough. traveling and stride just on He said he's coming out like he he. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I remember that. Bro, that's funny as fuck. Oh, we just fun. get into the Lakers. Jerry Buss. Ugh, rest in peace. It was a name that perfectly oh, encapsulated nearly the every goat, aspect. The of real the goat of this sport shit. Was no nigga had a hood. Uh, they said he had a club. The nigga about a barn. Nigga not the Nas was going with the hoe. That shit was lit. Girl. Lakers played in the entertainment capital of the world. And you knew it the second you turned out. There'll never be no shit like that again. Admiring shit, their world. play were the most recognizable faces Bad. on planet Earth. And the play itself was to From Arsenio to Denzel. The fast breaks were finished with a third. Some of the fastest, most athletic. Oh my God, bro. Up and down the floor. Green buzz and excitement. Them the niggas are up there having fun, bro. The most dazzling passer the sport Oof. ever saw. The best point guard. Yo, vision just gotta be so crazy. And so mesmerizing and breathtaking that he is known and simply them just own them, right? as magic. These Showtime Lakers became an instantly identifiable brand. Exciting, flash, and victorious. As ubiquitous to basketball offense. And you know how some people pass it be looking stars. too hard? Like his Lakers be looking like. 65 and 17 in the regular season. Serious, this is serious. Little trouble in the playoffs, going 15 and 3. What I really want to look at is their offensive that's rating. Tough. That's really that's cheap. That's a number that tries to be a synthesized reflection of the team's ability to put up points. The 87 Lakers set the record for the highest offensive rating in NBA history and held on to that record for over 30 years. Mm. The team was spearheaded by the Hall of Fame trio of Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and James Worthy, oh, supported by Byron Scott and Michael Cooper at the guard position. I see Green, and big men, AC Michael Thompson, Green, Michael Thompson, and Kareem. Craig Thompson, man, that's crazy. Managing those egos. Say they try to get Clay to be a Laker too. That would have been crazy. Exactly the things that head hey. coach Pat Riley brought to the table. His cool persona, slicked back hair, and far reaching boss gave way for Riley to really be is, the godfather of modern basketball. Godfather he won a championship right. as a player on the 1972 Lakers. Hey. Coached the Showtime teams to four rings. Won another as the coach of the 2006 Miami Heat. And after giving up coaching duties to become team president of the Heat, built two more championship squads in 2012 and 13. In total, only Riley's thumbs would be cold were he to wear every championship ring that he possesses. <laughs> At the dawn of the 1986-87 season, Riley facilitated a symbolic transfer of power within the Lakers that was, as far as I'm concerned, unprecedented. 
Though the Lakers have priced the champions since drafting Magic Johnson in 1979, the question of whose team it was between the and Kareem remained the subject of the game. In this offseason, following a flameout against the Houston Rockets in the 1986 playoffs, Riley decided to make a change. He wouldn't trade one of his stars, no contracts were restructured, and no major alterations were made to the Lakers' game plan. Instead, he sought out the league's elder statesman, his 39-year-old center, the captain, and told him that it was time. There could be no more confusion or ambiguity. The Lakers were going to be Magic's team. They had to be Magic's team. And to the undying credit of the man who won his first finals MVP in 1971, no. Kareem acquiesced. Mm. The leading scorer in NBA history handed over the car keys, knowing that Magic had the ability to drive these Lakers to immortality. Mm. Magic had a profound love and respect for Kareem, and <laughs> Riley told him to take the driver's seat. Magic's first I'm question crying. would be how the most decorated basketball player of all time would be. Ever, ever. Riley assured him that he'd already spoken to Kareem, and that the big man had given Magic his blessing. The transition went off Ooh, without Kareem. a hitch. And he not was moving over this one. Not right. one drop in efficiency. Mm. Not one errant glance exchanged between them. Add on top of it the fact easy. that Magic and Kareem are about as different as two personalities can be, and that partnership is even more impressive. Their opposite personalities are right. apparent, and they're very good. Magic even had got that in this game. Kareem hits a game winning skyhook at the bus. That's tough. That's a free throw line? Bro, the that's tough, bro. Bro, I didn't try that shit cool before. <laughs> throws his position on full display as if he'd been there bro, a that's a tough bad shot that's tough with a rookie magic johnson and magic hit one over. for the game winner on, on the Celtics. that's crazy that's crazy i want to dare to take like that a that shot, bro. they were different the history had decreed that they would form a partnership that would be the backbone of the greatest offense in nba history they didn't average the most points per game of mm. any team ever. On his head. With the players that they had yeah, shit. and the things that they could do, yeah. they are <clears throat> James. You know what else is unparalleled? NordVPN's ability to protect your data. I was really excited for NordVPN to partnership because I had <laughs> NordVPN. Did I remember that shit like yesterday? All the spam yeah. emails I got and regretted the fact that I never took my online security seriously. When I finally decided to start Remedy that, the first thing I did was look for a VPN, and Nord has proven to be as convenient and reliable as I possibly could have asked for. NordVPN is a virtual private network. It creates an encrypted tunnel for your I information. I can't wait to start getting paid promotion like this. Like I mean, we'll be getting paid for like to promote people's shit like this. We're going to be doing, we're going to be like Gilly and Wally. I'm on that, bro. Literally. Okay. That'd be funny as you talk. I'm on that, I'm fucking too, bro. I'm fucking with that. I'm talking about like, yeah, bro. I'm talking about like, <laughs> oh god, I'm fucking with that. Clear fruit so good. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be licking the bottle like pretty two dubs. <laughs> and then Gilly, man, his facial expressions and shit be funny as fuck. Eyes be big as fuck, Robbie. Oh god. Look at that. They're really funny as fuck. I be weak as fuck, bro. That's $3.18 a month. Your yeah, Laker fans, tap in, bro. Money back tap in. ASAP. First month, get your money right back. A huge thank you to NordVPN for a great service and for their support. The greatest offense in NBA history starts with Irvin Magic Johnson. He is only the best point guard in the history of the game, after all. Facts. The 1987 the Magic was his Number best one. Version. The year that saw him take home his first MVP trophy. The most notable manifestation of Magic's new role was in his scoring. Magic had always been able to put the ball in the hole, but he took this aspect of his game to a new height in 87. Yeah, that's the fastest I see Magic around. The entire offseason, owning his ability to put his back to the basket, getting advice and training from his NBA players, including Kareem. Look at that hook shot. Magic picked Kareem's brain on the signature hook shot. On what exactly it was that made the shot so deadly, and in how, what situation how you most consistent. Ah, how, how. Find these new skills, bro, this game killer is instinct, underrated and too. It really is. Bro. Bro. I'm watching this thing. Damn, this Magic cup game is underrated. Bro. He just gets to the spot so easy, bro. Get to the bucket, bro. 
24 people think magic is just a passion case. Can get into the fucking rack. Curry can't guard that. Into the lane. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. With ease. Too fucking big. opponents in the paint and picked his spots with his jump shot. And does good. That's the difference. Picking your spot with his jump shot. He can hit that. Like people don't think magic can shoot and shit. A nigga can shoot and clutch and shit like that, bro. He took. He picked his spot. Clutch. Clutch. Propensity to score. Clutch, bro. Something you gotta have. More than Jesus. Ten. Perfect. Now all he had to do was rely on his abilities as the best passer in the history of basketball <laughs> to set up his teammates and do traffic to too. succeed. Night <laughs> night <laughs> this nigga's sick. He found he open teammates and got the ball to them in ways He's that sick, dude. Be I was fast to the jump shot. It Bro, that's some sick shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. You were there, and he hit the ball to in a way that only he could. Mm, that shit is so fucking fact tough. Magic Johnson played the position of point guard at an imposing height of six foot nine. He could peer over defenses, presented matchup. Mm. Oh my the god! Of warm ups off and excelled at grabbing boards and initiating That's breaks sick. all by himself. Where Pass. most point guards, past and present, <laughs> and it be like right on the top. I'm telling you. Oh my god! Magic Excuse me. Moved with the same speed oh my and god. grace as Pete Maravich. God, no, that drop off was crazy. Of and he got the bro. With magic at the helm. Oh my the god, bro! The timing is like so underrated, bro. Cooper and Byron Scott broke down the court alongside his time in the pepper. Purple and gold, slashing and dicing into the lane for That's easy crazy. transition buckets. Fast breaks no, stole the breath of every pass. spectator who wondered what marvel LA would treat them to. Ooh. A tactic pioneered by Kuzi and Russell, Ooh. elevated into art form. Add on top of it, the That's fact true. that Magic is one no, of the like most dedicated, always celebrated shooters in the history of sports. And the player we're no, talking about isn't Marshall just Brown, one of the most important the best figures of basketball history. That's true, wow. He is the baddest man on the planet. Thanks. All because he would be on the baseline and pass from the baseline to the short corner. Yeah, Magic got some of the best passes ever, bro. LeBron, yeah, LeBron ain't doing no. <laughs> no, <hell> no <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like, I've seen LeBron bro, pass the ball and be like, some shit. Dimes. He be dropping shit, boy. No, he do, though. LeBron be dropping shit. Don't get me wrong, but no, he ain't no better pass than Magic. Nah, I ain't seen one. Anchored still by Kareem Abdul Jabbar. In the regular season, Kareem averaged 17 and a half points a game and a shade under seven rebounds, signs that he had indeed entered a new stage of his career. He was still laughing in the face of age, despite turning 40 that April, right before the playoffs began, thanks to a regimented diet and a training program that included martial arts and yoga. He led the team in blocks, was the second leading rebounder, third leading scorer, and was the fifth most accurate shot taker in the league. Thanks to Magic, the Skybook. Oh, okay. The surest saying. two points in basketball history. The surest two points in basketball <laughs> history. <laughs> the the facts. Who can block it? The only person I've ever seen block was Will. That's, That's the only person I've ever seen block that shit. Practically yeah. unstoppable. Virtually That's unblockable. Shit. And as effective That's in 1997 yes. as it was when he entered the league in 19. Will block that shit twice. He couldn't in quite the, play. the breakneck oh, speed of the Showtime God. transitions. But Sick. even at 40, Kareem was still capable of rising to the occasion, reaching into the way back. That shit is unstoppable. Long as fuck, bro. <laughs> Big tall ass he dude, bro. How tall is he, bro? He, he gotta be seven more. Score in the finals. Seven at least. And the man Long still had fuck. more in the tank. <laughs> the Lakers repeated as champions in 1988 Jeez, bro. 41. Dude. And made the finals again in 89. He was 42 too. years old. Too great. And the great. whole time, Kareem great. was so good. The skyhook was so effective that the Lakers had no reservations calling end of game plays for him. Rounding out the Lakers' big three was the team's small forward, no, he's James small. Worthy. Oh, the lanky forward was one of the league's like preeminent the isolation players. scoring threats. Ooh. A freakish athlete with an unrivaled first step that gave him an that advantage against nearly so. all the defenders. Off the dribble, he could snake and slither past defenders with his quickness, then ram the ball Ooh. through the net with his signature Ooh. Statue of Liberty dunk. He possessed a formidable post game with a deadly spin move and a reliable turnaround jump shot. Ooh. With a full head of steam, Worthy's size discouraged smaller players from getting mm. in his way, and his athleticism put doubts in the heads of every Bro. big man who even mm. thought about Bro. contesting him at the rim. The Worthy was sick. The benefit was from cold. Magic's fantastical passing. 
and the lasting legacy of James Worthy is one that Magic will trap be funny as fuck. He is remembered by his nickname, Big Game James. Big Game James. A player who routinely raised his level of play on the game's biggest stages. Leading the Lakers in postseason scoring, Worthy once again proved that when the chips were on the table, when you needed someone to step up, he could always be counted on. His achievements mm. sometimes get overlooked because of the star power that he played alongside and because of his willingness to play into the team system rather than gunning for his own stats. But it is because of this unselfishness and uncompromising desire to win that make James Worthy a Hall of Famer and a bona fide champion. Perhaps. The greatest point guard to ever play, the all-time leading scorer in NBA history, and one of the most underrated and unheralded superstars of the modern era. Not a bad core, right? But let's address some needs. How about some shooting? Ooh, ooh, good For shot, that, Kareem. we turned to Byron Scott the shot, two boy. of the NBA's elite marksmen. Hey, we have Mark Both Cooper. finished the regular season nah, in the top 10 in three-point percentage loaded, and in the top 11 in three-pointers made. Scott was a flamethrower of a scorer, able to light it up hey, from hey, all hey, over hey. the floor, shooting 17 points a game, and finishing just decimal Jeez. points away from 50, 40, 90 shooting spots. Mm, with seven, with 17 uh, bench, a game? He was a capable distributor, Shut averaged double-digit points, and finished the season with the second most three-pointers made, trailing only Larry Bird. In the playoffs, Cooper zeroed in his three-point shot, shooting an astonishing 48% from behind mm. the arc, and setting a record 48. with six made threes in game oh. two of the finals. And of course, Cooper and Scott were both tremendous athletes, capable of leading breaks with efficiency and finishing them with flair. This is showtime, after all. Showtime is cold, bro. Big men in AC Green, Michael Thompson and Kurt Randis. Then you got Kurt Randis and Michael Thompson. Oh my God! Green was an excellent floor runner, versatile defender, and the whole team. AC Green, Randis provided toughness off the bench. Oh my God! Michael Thompson and Randis bring that toughness off the bench. Which is why that for the '86 Celtics, acquired via trade in February, he came off the bench, provided world-class defense. And most importantly, gave Kareem time to rest going into the playoffs. This team had horses that could get out and run the break better than any team ever has. Mm. They had the Let power, they had size, they had passing, they had finesse, they had shooting, and they had a competitive, fighting spirit that spurred them to greatness. It wasn't just that the Lakers were fueled by a few stars. This wasn't a team that relied on dueling guitar solos. The strength of this team came from everywhere and everyone. It was an orchestral offense, and Magic Johnson was the conductor. Shit. But there's a yin and yang to this kind yeah. of stuff. So if the Lakers are so good at offense, they can't have been that good at defense, right? Mm. I'm afraid they were. Because not only was Michael Cooper one of the best shooters in the world, he was also one of the best stoppers in the NBA. Over his career, Coop was selected to eight all-defensive teams with five of them as a first-team selection. 1987 was his zenith as a defender as he took home Defensive Player of the Year honors. Mm, that's that's right. The 87 Lakers had the greatest offense of all time yeah, and the best I defender in the NBA. That's tough, bro. Coop was a prototypical swingman. That's off his whip. You ain't got the Defensive Player of the Year on your shit. I didn't know that. Forwards. That's with real. That's tough. Six five frame, the team sixth man was obsessive with his like preparation and film stuff. Like, like, I so always know Michael Cooper for like Larry Bird while he sat yeah, next defense. to his wife. And Duncan. commitment to his skill set that makes it no surprise. I know, I didn't even know he had Larry Bird called though. Cooper the best either. defender he ever faced. I'm from there every day. Now Larry Bird said that's the best defender he ever faced. That's tough. But he was that's tough to say. That's tough. That's a tough battle on your name. Bother other forwards, raising his level against headline matchups and relishing the opportunity to go against the Birds and the Dominique Wilkins. And as I mentioned before, A.C. Green and Michael Thompson were excellent interior defenders, unafraid to take or deal punishment inside. The best offense of all time with a tremendous defense to boot. Now we're talking about something historic. And after rolling their way through the Western Conference on the way to the finals, the Lakers found themselves in the midst of something historic. It should go without saying for those familiar with the league, but it bears repeating. The National Basketball Association has been defined by the rivalry yeah, between the Lakers and the Boston Celtics. They I'm faced so each other in the finals on 12 separate yeah. occasions, 
going back to the days when the Lakers played in Minneapolis. That's and this that's rivalry was, they was leave, never though, more right? intense than in the 1980s. What else was they going to go to? You feel me? What else was they going to watch? <laughs> like, if you was born in that era, you feel me? Helped to define yeah, that's that's why I'll be tripping like shit. This, <laughs> Bird Celtics <laughs> and Magic's Lakers met three times on basketball's grandest stage. In 1984, when the Celtics prevailed in yeah. seven games. In 1985, where the Lakers exacted revenge. Yeah, got them in 87. And in 1987. From the opening tip, this series was electric because this was the Celtics and the Lakers in the NBA Finals. Bird versus Magic once again. Team basketball being played at its That was like Kobe and LeBron meeting in the Finals. The Lakers stormed out with two Bird. decisive wins on their home court. Really As the that. series shifted to Boston, the Celtics responded with a gutsy Game 3 win to keep the championship hopes alive. And in Game 4, those hopes were bolstering to legitimate aspirations. The Celtics built a 16-point lead in the third quarter, and everything they looked at as Bird started to catch fire. But then, the Lakers started clawing their way back. They clamped down on defense. Forcing yeah, misses shit. and causing turnovers, <laughs> the floor yeah, with patented fast break opportunities, with points and contributions coming from all over. Oh, I love, yeah, that's, that'd be the best coming one. Down to the the water, water, this game was brimming with the, the hallmarks of the Oh, yeah, that, the game yeah, that was that's changing hands. Will, Will ain't catch that. Stars were making plays all over the court. Sick. And the outcome came down to the final yeah. second. Oh, we were that again, though. 12 seconds left. Bird buried a cold-blooded three-pointer. Yeah, he was put up there and like that, whatever. The famed it's Boston guard shook the he literally screams of the Celtics. Larry was cold, bro. Larry literally told them, though, before that play, I'm about to hit this shot. I oh, swear to God. Oh, my mama, bro. He told he told our bench or whoever the fuck he was talking shit to, like, I'm about to hit this shot and we about to go up, too. Or one, it was we about to go up. One of them on my mama. You bad motherfucker, man. No, I'm that that's like, like when you talk about mentally tough. Mentally tough, like, 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 like yo. Young Jordan Kobe. Man. Yo, yo get no tougher than them niggas. Bro, bro. Hold on, one more time. I just did my last reaction. The NBA players describing how good Larry Bird was. Them, them dudes said. <laughs> mm. He told Charles Barkley. I guess they put a white dude on me. He's like, bro, why y'all disrespecting me, bro? Charles Barkley laughed. Like, what you talking about? He's like, bro, y'all put a white dude on me, bro. Why is y'all put? Like, bro, is y'all dis y'all crazy? Larry? Larry Bird said that out of his mouth, bro. <laughs> like, bro, is y'all crazy? Like, you got a white white dude on me. Like, is one of y'all gonna check me? Like, for real, what? bro. It's coming crazy like that, bro. Hey, man, he's something else, I'm telling you. They, ain't, they don't make them like that no more, bro. Discriminate. They don't make them like that no more. You don't see Donovan Mitchell and them coming at niggas like that, bro. Fact. Niggas is no. Niggas is friends. <laughs> no cap, though. Like, Bird be your friend off the court, bro. But on the court, bro, we not friends, bro. Fuck you, nigga. And I'm about to cook your ass, nigga. On my mama, nigga. In front of your wife and your mama. And they're like, that's how that's what look on now. Yeah, that one, that's what Luca on, though. I ain't gonna cap Luca yeah, on that. Luca on that type of time. Yeah. I don't you speak know, to you niggas' language, yeah, bro. Oh, God. Look on D, get on that type of time. But as the mist careened off the rim, Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish collided and punched the ball out of bounds, giving the Lakers possession with seven seconds left, down by just a single point. And there it was. The thing that every kid who has ever shot a basketball has fantasized about. The moment. It was magic's time. It was the moment he had been ready for so for perhaps all of his career. His moment. In the Boston Garden, against his most bitter rival, with the best team that he has ever played on, in the midst of the best season he would ever play, Magic Johnson had the chance to put this series on ice. He'd taken the reins from Kareem, picked his brain about the nuances of the skybook, and gleaned innumerable lessons about being cool under pressure since the day they stepped onto a basketball court together. In the words of Seth Rosen, it's the best, this one, this magic one, this one, it's probably his best play for real. This is definitely probably Magic's best play ever. Took his time getting there, too. With the hook shot, though, for the game. In the finals, that's tough, bro. That's tough as fuck. A hook shot, though. And I know, you know what I'm saying? A hook shot, bro. Come on, that bitch can hit all backboard. <laughs> For real. 
That's crazy. Really close out the series is tough. Thanks in no small part to Kareem's performance. Scoring 32 points, uh, bringing down six boards, and blocking four shots. Well, he not hear that ass do There is an adage in sports that defense wins championships. It's something that's applied unilaterally. But for the most part, it is not the case in basketball. Since Bird and Magic entered the league and revolutionized the game, offense has almost always been more valuable. You need both, and the Lakers had both. But they excel at the most important aspect of the sport more than any championship team ever has. They were the fastest car on the block, one of the most impressive and balanced collections of talent in the game. Anchored Ooh. by the most accomplished basketball player ever, and led by the best player in his position in the history of the sport. For all of that, the 1987 Los Angeles Lakers are the greatest basketball team of all time. That's tough. Very. That was a good ass video with my Laker fans at, man. Like this video up, man. That was a good yeah, ass video. Y'all gotta, gotta hit my boys. Y'all gotta subscribe, man. Man, Laker fans, Magic Johnson fans, Kobe fans, Kareem fans, James Worthy. Oh, man, where the, where y'all at, man? Tap in. But yeah, man, we gonna wrap it up with that, man. Like this video, up, comment, you know what I'm saying? Subscribe. I'm trying to get the channel to 4K subs, man. We on the way, man. We going up. Um, so yeah, man, make sure y'all stay safe, stay tuned. Check out the description box, man. And shit, we out. Be great.